I'm Jamie Dempsey. And I'm heading to the heart of Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines. There, I hope to find the Kalinga tribe, once feared as headhunters. Central to their identity were their distinctive tattoos, separating the men from the boys, the elite from the average, protecting against sickness, injury, and death. Only one tribal tattooist remains, and she's 96. I'm on a quest to find her and ask her to give me a tattoo before this art form dies forever. On this leg of my journey, I'm swinging by the country's economic center, Metro Manila, where I trick out a new ride. I really can't wait to take this on the road. Move up north to play Pick Cupid. Well, it looks like a match made in heaven to me. And get stuck in a rut. I can't get out! I'm about halfway through my journey, and from here on out, the roads are bound to get rougher. After all, my ultimate destination is in the heart of the highlands. So it's about time to trade my bike for something that can go off-road. That's why I'm cruising down the South Luzon Expressway, the gateway to the nation's seat of power. Home to almost 12 million people at only 600 square kilometers, Metro Manila is really made up of 16 cities put together. This bustling capital region, home to soaring skyscrapers, winding asphalt streets, and deadlock traffic may not be a good place to enjoy the open road, but it sure is the best spot to score a new ride. I made it to Rapali to see if maybe I can swap out my bike for something that's a little more all-terrain. Let's see what they've got. Hi, I'm Jamie. Hi, I'm Aldous. This is an awesome showroom. As soon as I walked in, I thought, okay, you guys are gonna have something that I'm looking for. Definitely, we have a lot of bikes around here. Well, what I'm looking for exactly is something that might be uh, a little all-terrain, something that can handle smooth roads, rough roads. I'm heading north, I got a long journey ahead. Something I can be comfortable on. Well, we can walk around here and show you some different bikes that yeah, we have. Yeah, let's see what you got. We do have uh, on-road bikes. As you can see, we have the Duke, we have the Royal Enfield and other bikes. But if you're going for an extreme uh, off-roading, I would suggest a Rock-On, which is also uh, a motorcycle made in the U.S. I've never seen a bike like this before. It's really interesting. You mind if I sit on it? I don't mind. So it's a two-wheel drive. Oh. The problem is this one is only off-road. It's pretty comfortable, but you're right. I do need something that can go on-road and a little bit off-road. So I think maybe this isn't the bike for me. All right, well, we'll show you one of uh, the best uh, uh, on and off-road adventure bike that we call it here in the Philippines. Yes, adventure bike. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we have here uh, what we call the Ural motorcycle. It is made in Russia since the 1930s. Ural started life as a Soviet maker of motorcycles for the war against Nazi Germany. The bikes could handle harsh Russian roads and winters and even came with sidecars for machine gunners. To keep safe from Nazi bombers, production moved to the Ural Mountains, giving the company its name. I'm liking the look of the Ural. The question is, which Ural? On one side is the Ural Gear Up, a powerful two-wheel drive designed for tough terrains. On the other side is the Ural Retro, which maybe isn't quite as hardy, but which can handle both on and off-road conditions. The gear up is higher, heavier, and has bigger wheels, which allows it to power through rough conditions. But I actually find that a little intimidating because a heavier bike can be harder to handle. Plus, the retro has a bigger fuel tank. And in the jungles where I'm heading, who knows how long I'll have to ride before finding a gas station. This one looks like it might be a little too much for me to handle, but this one right away, I yes. could feel yes. we're going to get along. Yes. 
I really can't wait to take this on the road. This is really cool. I'm gonna get on it. All right. It's gonna be a little strange for me to switch from the automatic to the manual shifter, um, but I've got plenty of time to get used to it. <laughs> Feels good. And there's tons of storage space so I can collect lots of souvenirs. This is great. Well, I'm really excited to get this baby on the road. It's gonna be a lot more horsepower than I've been riding. It's gonna be a lot more weight, shifting, a lot more things to get used to but I'm up to the task. I can do it. I love it.